Welcome to this afternoon at the aquarium. My name is Ipsita and I am a public programs intern for UGA Marine Extension and Georgia Sea Grant. We conduct research, education, and outreach for healthy coastal ecosystems and communities. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Madeline to start the program. Hi everyone, like Ipsita said, my name is Madeline and I'm really excited that you chose to join us today for our Are You a Fish program. We're gonna go through some fish characteristics at the beginning, then we're gonna see some really cool fish we have here at the aquarium, and then we're gonna move into a game. So, the question, are you a fish? So, if you're at home, we're gonna be looking at some differences between us and fish, because you all know you're not a fish, you're people, right? So, I think we have some similarities and some differences we can highlight. So, I want you to point on your body what do you use to see with? Go ahead and point on your body. What do you use to see with? Right? Should be pointing at your eyes. Fish also have eyes. They see um, with their eyes just like we do. They might see a little bit differently, but they use eyes to navigate their world. Um, the eyes on the fish can be in different spots depending on where the fish live. So as we go through the aquarium today, we're going to look at where the eyes are on the fish and see depending on if they live at the bottom, if they live close to the top, they're going to have their eyes in different spots. Another thing that we kind of share with fish is what do we use to eat with? Point on your body where you use, what you use to eat with. And just like you're pointing to your mouth, fish also have mouths. And just like the eyes, the mouths are gonna be in different spots depending on where the fish lives. So if fish lives near the bottom of the uh, river or the ocean, they're gonna be feeding with their mouths on the bottom of their face. Then we'll be able to see some fish with different mouth spots though. Now I want you to point on your body what do you use to move with? This is gonna be a little bit different for you and fish. So point on your body, what do you use to move with? I'm pointing to my legs right now. You might use your arms, but I'm thinking fish don't use their arms and legs to move around, right? They don't have any arms and legs. So I have fish right here, so our foam fish example. We have some fins, we have a tail on the back, and different fish have different shaped tails and fins. Um, this will help them move differently since certain fish live in different places. So they're going to have different types of fins and tails. And we see some really cool fish and we're going to look at their tail shapes and start thinking about what kind of tail do you think would be best for a fast moving fish? So think, start thinking about that. We'll look at some fish. We'll come back and circle around to that question. Last thing I want you guys to think about is what do you use to breathe? Go ahead and point on your body what you use to breathe, right? Take a deep breath if you can't figure it out. Just take a deep breath out. Fish are gonna be breathing a little bit differently than we do, right? So I have my foam fish right here. They don't use lungs like we do. They have something called gills. This is what the gills look like on the inside of the fish. They look kind of like little feathers. Um, blood and oxygen will move over the fish's um, gills and they'll get oxygenated that way. Pretty cool, right? So that is our fish. Those are our differences. Like I said at the beginning, we're not fish, so we have to meet some fish and see what they look like today. All the fish that I'm gonna show you today that we have at the aquarium, we can find off the Georgia coast or in the Georgia rivers. Uh, I'll be able to point out some different places they like to live and some interesting and cool facts about them. If you see any fish that you really are interested in during this program, please let me know and I'd be happy to highlight them or get a close up of that fish during this program. So now that uh, Madeline has introduced what a fish is, I need your help to figure out whether these animals are true fish or not. I'm going to show you three animals and we'll give you a poll and let me know which one you think is a fish. So we have a jellyfish. We have a starfish. And we also have an angelfish. So you'll see that pole open up now. It has a green header on top. And it's gonna ask you which animal is a fish, jellyfish, starfish, or angelfish. Give us your best guess. This is awesome. I can see that folks are participating. We already have um, six answers, seven answers so far. Looks like angelfish um, seems to be ahead. Wonderful. Well, we can go ahead and show the responses. You all could teach this class. So you are right. 100% um, of you thought that it was the angelfish because even though starfish and jellyfish have fish in their names, um, they don't have any backbone. So they're not a true fish. Um, although you will get a chance to see a number of true fishes um, during this program. 
So this is our first tank we're going to be looking at. Um, this is what I call the baby tank. So we have a lot of different fish in here that you could find um, off in the reefs we have off of the coast of Georgia. Uh, we'll have some bigger fish you can look at later that will also be found in this habitat. But these are the little ones. All of the fish in this tank are juveniles. Uh, they're super cute and they have this nice little tank set up for them. So you can see the habitat right here. It's pretty rocky on the bottom. You could also find in these types of habitats soft corals and sponges. So we have some models of that to kind of give, make them feel comfortable. But in this tank, we have a few different species of fish. fish. So this one is called a file fish. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, there's two in here. They're really interesting. Uh, they actually will change color. So this one's pretty dark right now, but sometimes it will come over and it'll be pure white. So they change colors to blend in with their backgrounds. And you just saw this guy right here. So we have a few of these in this tank. This is the one I really wanted to highlight. Uh, it has a really interesting fin type. So this one's called a sea robin. There's a few in here. Well, they don't want to move. Here we go. This one's not moving too much. So they have an interesting fin on the bottom. I don't know if you can see the little spiky part um, that their fin makes up. Let's see. They are just moving around a lot. I don't know if you can hear the sounds they're making right now, but um, they actually make this really cool, um, it sounds like they're burping, but it's a little belchy sound they make um, when they get excited. I think they might think I'm here to feed them, but I'm not. Uh, so they're moving around. Uh, the bottom of their fins are a little bit different than normal fins of fish. Uh, it actually allows them to almost walk along the bottom of the tank or in their environment and feel what's a lot around them and feel for food or for predators. So if one of them lands on the bottom, I'll try and show you, but it's a really interesting adaptation, a really different uh, type of fin. It kind of looks like wings on them, right? They're really interesting fish. Let's see this one. No, they are not, they're not cooperating today, but that is fish, right? They, they'll do their own thing. <laughs> we also have a snapper in this tank. There it goes. Uh, that's another fish that you can find offshore. Let's see, and then there is also a um, skillet fish in here. I don't see it right now. Those are the different fish that you can find here off the coast. And let's take a look at their tails. Um, we'll be looking at the tail shape with all of the fish we see today. Uh, and we'll be able to compare them. A lot of these fish have a pretty similar tail though right here. I think since our ro sea robins aren't cooperating that I will move to the next tank. So we're gonna move down and look at some more fish that you'd be able to find offshore. Uh, these ones will be a little bit bigger and this is the main part of our aquarium that I'm heading into. All right, so. Whoop. This is our Gray's Reef tank. So this tank is modeled to be like the, the reef we have offshore, Gray's Reef. Um, it is a rocky bottom reef that we have nearby off the coast of Georgia. And these are some of the fish that you'd be able to find out there. And just like the baby tank we, we just looked at, there are some sponges and some coral in here to make them feel comfortable, make them feel like they would, like their natural environment that you'd find them in. This is the first fish that you always see when you come up to this tank. You visit our aquarium before you know this fish. It's called a trigger fish. You see it? It likes to be the star of the show. It's a very curious fish. Um, it wants to see what everyone's doing. And when you come up to clean the windows of this tank, or when if you work here and come up to clean the windows of this tank, this one will actually follow the rag around as you wipe it along the windows. <laughs> and it really wants to be involved. So we might have a hard time seeing the other fish in this tank if this uh, trigger fish wants to be seen a bunch, but it is a really interesting fish. You can't see it right now, but on the top of its head, there's a spot, that's where the trigger is. So a little trigger will come up if it's feeling scared or if it's territorial, um, this little spine will come up on the top of its head and it makes it bigger so that it's harder to eat. So if it's scared, a bigger fish won't be able to get its mouth around it because it's too big. Now let's take a look at some of the other fish in this tank. So let's take a look at the tail fin. <laughs> of the fish behind here. These are called blue runners in the back, the ones with the really forked tail. Notice those? They're all swimming together. Go ahead and put in the chat box if you know what the word is for when fish swim together. The trigger fish does not want us to look at those other fish. All right, does anybody have a guess on what it's called when fish like to swim together like this? Some people said school. School, yeah, exactly right. So these fish are schooling together. Um, that has another, another adaptation or another behavior that we see um, to prevent predation. So they're schooling together so that a predator 
would have a hard time coming up and picking one out. <laughs> but like I said, the trigger fish does not want us to see the other fish in this tank. It really wants, really wants to be right up <laughs> where my phone is. Um, but those uh, blue runners, they will be schooling together. They have that forked fin. Um, so keep that in mind when we're thinking about tail fins. Why, why do you think they have a forked fin compared to this fish right here, which doesn't have a forked fin, do you think? Start thinking about which one you think would be faster. That's all the fish I really wanted to cover in this tank. If you have any questions about these fish or want me to close up on a specific one, put it in the chat box. I'd be happy to answer any questions or highlight a different fish from this tank. All right, and we're here at our next tank. So this one's gonna be a little bit closer to shore, a little bit um, closer to the beaches rather than being offshore like the uh, Gray's Reef tank is. We have a few different fish in here that are really interesting and really exciting. So one you're probably pretty familiar with is this one. Maybe you don't no notice quite what it is right off the bat. But this is a puffer fish. This one's a Northern puffer. We have two in this tank. I don't see the other one right now, um, but the puffers are really interesting. They can puff up really big. And they do that by sucking in water, if they're underwater, or air, if they're above water. Um, and it, they add it into their body, and it makes them super round. And they're able to be prevented, <laughs> basically, basically able to prevent themselves from being eaten by doing that. You can see this one up here. <laughs> um, they're really interesting fish. They're usually pretty curious on what's going on. We also have these fish right here, these striped ones. They're called spade fish. And I want you guys to type in the chat box if you can guesses on why they're striped. Think about other animals that are striped. Why would it be beneficial to have stripes if you're a fish or if you're an animal? I'd love to hear your response if you, responses if you have any guesses on why a fish should be striped. Some people have said that maybe it's for camouflage. That's exactly right. So they, um, it's a little bit different camouflage. They're not blending in with a striped background. They're blending in with each other. So when they're in a big group and they have stripes on, and they all have stripes, it can be confusing for a predator who's speedily coming up to try and catch one. It can be confusing for a predator to figure out which, which fish is which. So it actually is a camouflage method that they use um, to camouflage with each other. And they're super cool fish. If you have any questions about these guys, let me know. We're gonna look at their mouths too. I know I said earlier that mouth placement can be different for different fish, but these guys don't usually hang out near the bottom of the river or the ocean. So their mouths are pretty set forward. They're gonna be catching small pieces of food or small animals. We give them chopped up fish and shell food here. Um, so they, won't, they don't have their mouths on the bottom. That goes the same as the fish. Their mouths aren't on the bottom. They're just set on the, the front side of their faces like we have them. Where's the other little puffer up there? Pretty exciting. So let's go ahead and move on to the next tank unless somebody has a question. This one's the ne right next to it. And we have a bunch of different fish in here. Let's see if we can get a good shot of them. So these are one of my favorites. They're very similar to the, the puffers we just met, but they aren't puffers, they're called burr fish. And there's three in here, they're really, really exciting. Um, I really love them. They're a little bit different from puffers. I see if I can get a good shot of it. So if you can see their spines are easily visible, they're upright. The puffers we just saw, their spines were flat and you couldn't see them as easily. These guys will puff up at, just like the puffers that we last saw will, but they always have their spines kind of out. And here, come, here it comes, such a cool fish. These guys are really curious. I, they're one of my favorite fish we have at the aquarium. <laughs> when I come around to the back and um, look down into the tank, they actually will come up to the top of the tank and they like to do this thing where they spit water out of the, out of the uh, fish tank at you. It's really cute, really funny. And they're really curious. So they'll come up when, people, when visitors are here, they'll come right up and look at everyone. <laughs> and we, I don't know if you see it back there, right along the bottom. This is called a guitar fish. <laughs> and that doesn't quite look like a fish and it's pretty hard to see right now since it's hanging out in the sand. Uh, this is one of those fish where you could be confused when you first see it. Are you a fish or are you not? This is a fish. It's very similar to a stingray uh, or a shark. 
and their mouths are actually at the bottom of their bodies. So their mouth is underneath them right now. And that's because they hang out along the bottom and they'll eat food off the bottom rather than like puffers who will eat food in the water column. If you have any questions about these animals or any questions about this tank, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. We actually had a question on the last tank. Um, oh, okay. She asked why their fin and tail were so close together. On which fish? Um, whoever asked the question, could you clarify which fish it was? It's probably the spade fish. I'm actually not sure why they why they would be like that. It, they're, they are a lot like angelfish. At least I think their body shape are very similar to angelfish. And they're not super fast moving, so they don't really need to have um, their tail or fins be designed to be a super fast moving fish. They're not going to be catching prey like ambush style or anything. Hope that answers that question. They're a pretty unique fish. <laughs> Back to this tank. Um, it's also, I don't know if you noticed, this tank's pretty cloudy. Um, that's because the guitar fish, when she moves along the bottom, since it's so sandy, um, she'll kick up sand into the water column and it makes it kind of cloudy. So she just got fed yesterday, and uh, I think that might be kind of explaining why it's so cloudy today. But let's say goodbye to the puffers and move on, or the burfish, and move on to the next tank. <laughs> so this tank has some of our biggest fish in it. Um, we find a lot of these fish all in the estuary. They're estuary fish. Um, if you want to go ahead and put in the chat box if you know what an estuary is, I'd be happy to read, listen to some of those answers and see if anybody here knows what an estuary is. Um, these guys, you'll find them out there. We have some snook. This one right here with the stripe is a snook. We have some spotted sea trout right there. Um, this one's a grouper. <laughs> we have some stingray in this tank too. If they come around, I'll show you a little bit closer. All right, so we find these fish in the estuary. I don't know if anybody has an answer for that. Sita, do you know? Um, one person answered where fresh and salt water meet. That's exactly right. Yep. So these guys like to hang out in that area. That's really an interesting um, fish that can live in a uh, brackish water like that where the salinity is varying. Um, so that's a really exciting different area that we see some animals in. I don't know if I pointed out the stripe on this snook right here. Um, that's also a really interesting thing we see on fish. Soft spots, tree shots going by. The, um, the stripe is called a lateral line. And I don't know if you can notice this, but the fish are all in this tank and they're not bumping into each other or they're really bumping into the walls that much. And that lateral line, um, that stripe on the side lets them feel the water moving around them and lets them feel the other fish around them. And it helps prevent them from bumping into other fish or the coral or the walls. They're all very interested in what I'm doing over here. <laughs> We had a question on whether they go in groups. No, I actually don't believe they school. Um, usually you see that with the smaller fish. These guys are a little bit faster and they're a little bit bigger, so they don't necessarily need to school. Here's the stingray right here. We're actually gonna have a whole program later in the summer about stingrays and sharks. Um, I think if Kayla wants to correct me on that in the chat box, but um, so you can learn a little bit more about stingrays there, but I'll show this one. And then there's that, uh, there's that fish again. And we're actually gonna move on to the next tank so we can see a little bit more of the other fish. If you have any more questions about this tank, please let me know, I'd be happy to come back to it. We had a question on what do groupers eat? Grouper, they're gonna eat other fish. Um, there's that one right there. They eat pretty, we feed them pretty big chunks of fish and um, gel food here and some shrimp. Um, they'll be actually catching them in the wild, but we throw them the food here. There it is up there. Um, say goodbye to the snook and say wave to Neptune as we go by. <laughs> and then we're gonna go into this tank. So there's a bunch of really interesting animals we have in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this crazy looking animal in the corner. We actually have a pole. Do you think this animal right here with the really long nose, do you think that's a fish or not? I think we have a pole for that. Go ahead and guess or put the, on, do you know what this animal is? Is it a fish? <laughs> it's not coming out over here, so you can't see it as well. Can 
We have our answers coming in, and right now it's tied on whether it is a fish or not. All right. Um, and so, yes, it is a fish is winning um, slightly, and I'm going to end the poll now. All right, Eric, it's actually coming out for us to see it. <laughs> So everyone who guessed that it was a fish is right. I know it looks pretty crazy with that long, long nose. Some people think it looks like an alligator. This is actually a long nose gar, and we find it out in the rivers out here, um, in the um, in the river out here in Savannah. Um, they like to hang out where it's kind of a little bit fresher water. It's still going to be brackish, so it's still going to have a little bit of salt, and the water it hangs out and usually has a muddy bottom. This is a really cool fish. It's one of my favorites here. Uh, what do you guys think, if you want to put in the chat box, what do you think it needs this really long nose for? <laughs> Why do you think this, this gar would have a really long nose with all of those teeth? I want to hear your thoughts. This one's, like I said, one of my favorite fish. So I want to hear what you think it would have that nose for. <laughs> we also have, while I'm waiting for responses, we have some catfish in this tank as well. We have two different types of catfish and we have this mullet right here too, but um, we have the sea catfish and then we have um, the other catfish that I cannot pronounce the name on, but it is another fish we found in the river. You can see they have those whiskers. Uh, those whiskers are also um, an adaption for this fish that allows them to feel the bottom, just like the sea robins. When we, when I just pointed those out, those long spines they had that helped them feel the bottom and feel for prey. The catfish also need to feel for prey and potential predators along the bottom. I see one right there. So we had some answers for why the gar needs a long nose. Perfect. Um, some people said to dig for food and maybe even to reach in small places. Reach in small places. That's a really good guess. The gar is actually going to be catching food. It's more. It's a. It's a more of an ambush predator. Um, I actually have right here um, the tool we use to feed it. Let me see if I can grab it for y'all to see. So when we feed the gar, we we have to feed it off of this really long stick right here. Um, show it to you. We feed it from the top of the tank and we put a piece of fish on the, on the tip. And we, since it, it does like to act as a predator and it likes to chase its food, we'll, when we put the fish on the end of the stick, we'll move it around the tanks so that the gar can chase it around and feel like it's hunting. And it'll ambush and grab that piece of fish um, and chew it up. So they use that all those teeth for their prey that they're catching. Uh, this is a really cool fish. This one can be kind of picky about hunting. So we do have to make sure when we feed it that we let it hunt and we're very careful about letting it have that fun experience or that natural instinct. It's hiding in the corner though right now, so you can't see it as well. Um, and there's the catfish. So if you have any questions about anything in this tank, I'd be happy to show you. We also have in this tank um, a skate, which is like a stingray without uh, the stinger or the barb on the end. Uh, we'll be talking about them a little bit more in a later program, but there's our female right there hanging out on the bottom next to the mullet. And if you have any questions about any of the other tanks that I didn't get to, I'd be happy to go back to a tank as well. Um, but I think I'm gonna move up um, to the top for our last activity. So I think we have another poll while I do that. So I'm gonna hand it off to Ipsy Dark Kayla for that. Hi, so you'll see a poll in progress right now asking you which was your favorite fish you saw today? Was it the garfish, the one with the really long nose? Was it the catfish that had um, the little feelers sticking out of its um, chin? Was it the baby sea robin with the wings in the baby tank? Or was it the burfish that could, um, that had the really big eyes? So we have responses coming in right now. Um, we have about 50% of people voting and we have six votes now. Thank you guys for voting. Um, so I'm gonna close the poll in a couple of seconds and then we can see the results. All right, so it looks like the burfish is the favorite of today, which all of these answers were correct. So congratulations. Um, and I think I will hand it back over to Madeline whenever she's ready. I am ready. <laughs> awesome.
Um, I'm happy everyone liked the birdfish. That one's my favorite as well. Um, but all answers are right. Like Etsy said, they're all really amazing fish. Um, but the last thing we're doing today is I'm teaching you how to play a game and we're going to play it a couple rounds that maybe you can play at home too. So it's called ocean motion. It's a lot like Simon says. So there's a magic word that you have to say ocean motion and you can do the movement. I teach you if I say ocean motion, but if I don't say the magic words then you can't do the movement, you have to freeze. So that was how you get out is if you move without me saying the magic words. I'm going to teach you some movements. We're going to do it based off some of the really cool animals we saw today. So our movements during um, this round will be ocean motion fur fish, ocean motion sea robin, ocean motion catfish. Hmm. Let's see, I think that's oh, ocean motion gar. Let's do those four. So when I say ocean motion, do the movement and it's all in the honor system. So. I can't see if you're out or not, so just play to the best of your ability. Ready? All right, so ocean motion birdfish, ocean motion gar, ocean motion sea robin, catfish. So if you did catfish, then you're out. So we're gonna play a couple rounds of this and we'll have a little bit of fun doing it, all right? Awesome, ocean motion birdfish, ocean motion catfish, ocean motion gar, ocean motion birdfish, ocean motion catfish, sea robin. All right, if you did sea robin, you're out. All right, let's play one more round. This one's gonna be a long round though. All right, ocean motion birdfish, ocean motion sea robin, ocean motion catfish, gar. You're out if you did gar. So I hope you guys can kind of get the idea of that game and can play it a little bit more. I know we're kind of running out of time, so we can't play too many more. We can't play any more rounds, I don't think, today, but it's a really fun one. Uh, I hope that you guys play at home and add in some of your favorite ocean animals. You can add a fiddler crab, you can add in a dolphin added whatever you like that you see on the coast or any of your favorite animals. Awesome. We also have an activity sheet um, that you guys can play on, play with or download online. I think Kayla might have added it to the, uh, the chat, but that's based off of the original game we played. Thank you so much, Madeline. That was an amazing program. If you had fun today, then I hope you will consider joining us next Tuesday at 11 a.m. for our fish dissection. In addition, every Thursday at 2 p.m., we have a virtual series for family with children ages four to eight years old. I do want to give a big thank you at this time for any friends in the audience, as your donations and support help us, after, help us offer educational programming this summer. And if anyone is interested in becoming a friend, the application is on our website. You can also stay connected with us after this program by attending the other public programs, following us on social media, or learning about our volunteer and internship opportunities. Thank you for joining and see you next week.